Okay, it is Tuesday and I am at a duckless unit that I was at about, I want to say a month ago. It was leaking water. The condensate, internal condensate pump failed and it, it's not fixable in the current state. So we're going to change that and replace that condensate pump. So luckily the unit is not on a roof. It's a commercial building and I'll show you what's going on. Okay, so here's our outdoor unit, uh, hair. I've never seen this particular brand of duckless before, but that is what we're working with. So first things first, pull power. Hopefully power actually shut off. Yeah, it did, spinning slowly. And I'll show you the indoor unit. So. This unit right here. Yeah. We're moving it down like enough so that it clears the steam pipe. If you want to set up the six foot ladder here with a drop off, and we'll be replacing the pump inside too. And then this is the other unit, which we'll be doing a maintenance on. I brought the Oil cleaning kit in case we need that. Got parking right outside. No parking. But I brought the coil jet along with some line set. We won't be able to replace the whole run. If we need to extend it, we're gonna have to braze it. But yeah, it should go smoothly. Got the recovery tank. Peter's got the machine. This is where we're working. Okay, so we're hooked up for recovery. I connected to both uh, both loops for both heads, and we hooked up to the, the gauges, purged out my lines through the recovery machine, and up to the recovery tank, opened up, and now we can start that recovery process. And we're weighing out. Uh, just to see how much we take out. Our unit information is in the back. And let's see what it says for charging. 49.5 ounces. So hopefully that's what we take out and that's what we'll be putting back in. Okay, so I actually stopped and I closed off these valves. Since we're weighing out, we'll know exactly what we need to weigh back in. Uh, because you can't charge duckless by pressure, so you have to charge by weight. So I'm gonna start this back up again. That way we're only vacuuming out our, our lines, we're covering our lines instead of the whole condensing unit. So it should be significantly less refrigerant that we're pulling out. And it'll be easier to pull the vacuum on too because we won't be vacuuming out the whole condenser. Okay, so our recovery process finished at just above two pounds. We got an extra ounce and a quarter in there. Um, if we self-purge our machine, we should get about another ounce, maybe two. But uh, we pulled into a vacuum, so we don't have to worry about the lines uh, having refrigerant in them. Um, and we can get started with the indoor unit, which I've already taken apart somewhat. And we'll just disconnect the lines. I'm hoping we won't have to extend the lines. I'm hoping there's enough there, but we'll see what happens. So we dropped the unit about six inches, six, seven, eight inches to clear this steam pipe. Now we're hooking up this new uh, Aspen pump that's gonna mount directly below the unit and use the same discharge line, but we gotta screw this into place and get the tubing connected than wiring. Okay, so you could see not doing the normal uh, vacuum procedure with the true blue hoses. Um, just because it's, it's such a small line and we're not aware of any leaks. I don't believe there's any leaks. Uh, pressure test is okay. 
I'm vacuuming through the manifold um, and I'm using two hoses. Now it's it's all new hoses along with new uh, adapters so I don't think there's really much of an issue aside from it possibly taking longer because I'm pulling through the manifold and we are reading farther from the farthest end of the system so when we do our decay test we'll just have to make sure that it sits and it stays for a while rather than uh, rising up super quickly. So we're probably not at 388 microns, we're probably much higher, but we'll give it some time to pull down and then we can add our charge if it passes decay. Um, but I can't really record everything inside because somebody's right there and it'd be weird, but we disconnected everything, brought the unit down, we didn't have to add any length on the line set, there was plenty of play. And we installed that new pump, which Hopefully works out okay. Uh, the old pump was shot. Uh, I checked the fuse and the fuse was okay. So, good thing I got a pump before coming here. Um, and then we should be good to go. So hopefully it pulls down fairly quickly and we can charge it up. Okay, so I did, uh, I filled it up with nitrogen to do another pressure test because it was taking light. a while. Use the left two lanes and to turn on to long beach it passed uh, pressure test again. So I dumped that nitrogen hooked it back up to the vacuum. It's pulling quicker now, but we have to pick up some materials, so we're just gonna let the vacuum run. Uh, we'll probably be back in about an hour, so we'll have plenty of time to actually pull that vacuum down. Okay, so I, uh, we got back, we were around 80 microns, and we finished our decay at around 170. Now, I uh, purged my yellow hose, and while the others were still under a vacuum, or not under a vacuum because I actually added pressure. I opened up these valves, but I'm adding the two pounds, two ounces that we took out. And we also have a newly developed leak inside. And I think it's just because the system's been off. Uh, water may have accumulated and it wasn't able to pump out. So add that two pounds, two ounces, maybe another ounce or two for loss, but should be okay there and we'll get them um, hopefully kicked back on and everything works okay. Okay, so still at that unit. It's 1.13 p.m. and unfortunately it's not working. Um, not that the pump's not working, but the entire system's not working. I triple checked all the wiring. All the wiring was good and okay. I was able to get in touch with their tech support, which is absolute garbage. It's a cheap garbage product, but um, at a minimum, the outdoor control board needs to be replaced, and he thinks that that he thinks that that is due to the pump failing. Um, but we don't know, because uh, that's just the minimum. That's all that he would give us the ability to test, and he stated that's all that we could test. But yeah, I'm not sure what the, the building owner is going to want to do. Uh, I think they should be replaced for better systems because we could do all the repairs in the world, but if it needs more and more repairs, what's the point? So, we'll see what happens. So I'm not sure what they're gonna choose to do. I think replacing it's the best option. Um, tech support really was such a nightmare, but they paid for today. They said they'll get back to us in regards to what they wanna do. But uh, I am heading on to my next call, which is a AC not cooling. <coughs> um, it's an old rooftop unit that uh, there's a lot of history for of them just wanting to add refrigerant every time. So R22 system, we'll see uh, what they want to do and what the issue actually okay, is. So here's the unit, just uh, took an overall look at a couple things, but we're going to... Turn our disconnect off. We had no errors. Uh, the LED was on, just solid. Check our filters. Dirty. Holy. Right. They're dirty. Let's see if he has replacements. Run it filterless while we're here. But I'll show you what I know. Can you grab these, Peter? What I noticed in a 
second. So, nothing looks incredibly out of the ordinary, but if you look close, got a popped off connection right there that burnt, and another there as well. So I'm gonna confirm that there's no power here. Uh, we'll get those connections fixed. Oh, uh, we got one right here as well. So we got quite a few burnt uh, wires. So it looks like we're gonna be uh, fixing these quite a few burnt wires first. Okay, so before I go crazy touching anything, get our meter out here and start checking for voltage. It's three phase, so we'll go from one leg to the other. This is the incoming power. We have 210. One leg to the other, 211. And one leg to the last combo, 211. So we have a uh, good voltage. We didn't trip any breakers. I'm just gonna check the other side. Zero. Just making sure that it's safe to work on. 0.4, pretty much zero. 0.4, pretty much zero. So, good on that. We have our wiring. You got the crimp tool? I didn't, I didn't crimp that. No, I'm not crimping three legs of power with the wire stripper. Okay, so I got my meter out set for capacitance. I disconnected both the fan wires off of the capacitors. I'm just gonna test those. So that's 9.2, it's rated for 10. Still within uh, 10%. This is 1.3, so we need to replace at least the one capacitor, but I'd like to just replace both to be on the safe end. Okay, so I fixed up all of that wiring, um, ran a new black wire, cut back on this orange wire. I had to use a wire nut to tie these in uh, to a, a Wago, because these wires are so thick, the jackets, uh, in order to wire commons up on the capacitor. But uh, that's all wired in, should be good. So when I apply power, the unit should turn on without any issue. Uh, that is if the thermostat is still calling. So let's see. Got a solid light. Do you want to double check the thermostat? Make sure I'll come. Okay, so I forgot to connect a wire. The fan wasn't turning on, but I reconnected the wire. I jumped it out here and everything seemed to turn on, but um, having Peter at the thermostat right now, turn power off. Uh, we're gonna just jump out the thermostat, bypass it, because I think the thermostat might not be working. Um, and then we'll take it from there, so. Pete, are you ready yet? Um, Which? RC and RH have jumped out. RC and RH have jumped out, good. On the thermostat. Yeah, that's okay. Because this unit does their heating and their cooling. Take off but where is R? Do you see R coming into the thermostat? There's no R terminal. RC or RH, is there a wire going in besides a jumper? It's just like a jumper, there's nothing going in. There's no... So that's going to be a problem. Hold on, let me see. I'm going to come down. Okay. No wire going to RC. Let me take a look, actually, to see what color wire they have going to R. I'll go downstairs and see what's going on. Okay, so here's our thermostat. Yeah, it was a little bit of a uh, thermostat when we originally did it. But... Who put it in? I don't remember. Hmm. Is it a pipe doctor? Yeah, no, it's not no. the pipe doctor no. model. No, it's not. Okay. So, yeah, that jumper doesn't need to be there because there's already one built into here. I don't have my strippers on me, I don't think. No, I don't, but... The R wire wasn't connected. Now, I don't know if this was... The R wire or not, but we'll find out. 
This is a little bit of a hack way of taking off insulation, but not going all the way up to the roof to get my wire strippers. Yeah, this is very odd that they had no R wire hooked up. Building owner said it fell out. Which, you know, that seems unlikely, but. Make sure that all these wires are free from touching each other. Okay, cover. Okay, I'm gonna go turn the unit on. I'm, so you can stay here. And so I just came back up, flipped the disconnect on, and what do you know? We're running. So next thing is to check our refrigerant pressures. Um, I don't know what it's going to be like. I think they're probably going to be low because they have been low for several years on the record uh, for our company. So see what happens. Uh, our amp draw on our blower motor when I got that running and jumped out here was four amps and it's rated for seven. Um, the motor does seem to be spinning a little bit slow. I confirmed all the voltages coming in uh, and I took an amp draw on each leg. Um, I'm not too sure. If it's going to be okay, um, we'll, we'll know from the pressures too if we have no superheat. But if that's the case, I did get, uh, I did confirm availability and pricing on that motor. Um, but, you know, you may not want to do that considering the age. Okay, so the pressures are like a little bit not the greatest. We have um, like a mid to high sub cooling and uh, a fairly high superheat. I'm also reading it close to the compressor, uh, so, but it is going down as it runs for longer. We had 34 degrees, now we're at 31 degrees of superheat. I'll show so you. Here's our pressures. Oh no. Right here. R22. Oh yeah, our superheat's dropping, so. That's it. That's nice. Um. But we confirmed blowing 61 inside, returning 75. That's pretty good then uh, for such an old system to be cooling by 14 degrees. Um, the charge may not be perfect, but I don't I don't want to add and bring that sub cooling up and bring that high side pressure up, if, especially if it's cooling. Um, but I did remove the filters. We're keeping them out, and he's going to get new filters. So should be good to go here. Well, we got a flat, so... We're putting on the spare because we have to get to church. But uh, yeah, I didn't expect that to happen. It said tire malfunction. All of a sudden the tire pressure started dropping. Got a big hole right there. So I don't know what happened, but it stinks. Just as we got off the highway too, it was perfect timing. But we're using the jack that comes with it. It's kind of sketchy, but it's working. and should be high enough pretty soon. I'm gonna start breaking these loose. Okay, so for a breaker bar, we got a massive piece of three quarter black pipe. That's working perfectly. Going in a star pattern. These were crazy tight. But those are all loose now, so we can take them all off with the impact. It's hot. Don't touch the metal. Don't, don't want you to burn yourself. Okay, and there it is. Hopefully, we're jacked up high enough. You wanna to try to line it up, flip it. It's a full-size spare. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll get one caught. You, 
you should be able to catch this lip in. Here, I'll keep the Okay, so I got the tire on. Mercedes lug nuts are weird. They're not lug nuts, they're lug bolts. They're so hot. And probably gonna need to torque these to uh, a lot of ugga duggas. Finish it off with the breaker bar. And socket is destroyed. I guess it's not rated for Mercedes Sprinter lug nuts. It is from Walmart. Okay, only one more thing to do. And that's throw our hubcap on. However that goes, just like that. And stand clear of it, Peter. I'm gonna let it down. Hopefully nice and slow. Let's record this at the same time. I was doing it. I don't want to kill myself. There we go. Lowering it nice and steady. Oh, and now not so steady. Okay. That wasn't bad. What did that take us, Peter? 20 minutes? Yeah, that was, that was good. Take this thing apart, put it all back together in the little storage bin that they keep so it in. we finished up with that. Uh, that was unexpected, but we're lucky that it was as, literally as soon as we got on the exit ramp for the highway. So we were able to pull into a gas station like that was maybe 800 feet away. Uh, that tire is destroyed now, but whatever. We'll get a new tire on um, and hopefully be good to go. But hopefully you enjoyed watching the video. Like the video if you liked it. Comment any advice or criticisms or feedback and subscribe. Thanks for watching.